So we have the tank set up for the year and filled with water and the filter is running. We don't yet have the chiller, which is this metal coil. We don't have that running yet. We want our good bacteria to start growing and they do that better in warmer water. So we're letting them grow at a warmer temperature and then we are going to kick on our chiller and change it a couple degrees a day and drop it down to 52 degrees before the day we pick up our eggs. To test the water, since it's a brand new tank setup, we need to use our freshwater test kit and then an additional GH and KH test kit, and that measures hardness and alkalinity. So what we're gonna do is take some tank water and fill our little vials, and we're gonna follow the directions for each of these tests to test our water. Here are the directions for our high range pH test. So you need to use either the low range or the high range, and I know my water needs the high range test. So we're gonna fill our tube with five milliliters of water. We're gonna add five drops of the high range pH test solution. We're gonna cap the tube and then invert it several times to mix the solution. And then we're gonna read the results by comparing it to the color chart. So I have my color chart ready, and I have my high range pH test solution ready. I'm gonna take off the lid and add five drops to my tube. I do this straight up and down. So that the drops are equal sized and you can see that the solution is starting to change color. I put the cap on and invert it. You can see that that is my color after I've inverted it and it's all an equal color in my vial. And I'm gonna compare it to my test strip. And mine reads at just about eight. So my pH is 8.0. Our next water quality test is ammonia. And this one actually requires two bottles of solution. So again, I'm gonna get five milliliters of water from the tank, and I know it's five milliliters because the meniscus, that curve of the water, hits the line. The bottom of the curve hits the line. And what I'm gonna do is open up bottle one, and we're gonna do eight drops. And again, I'm gonna hold the bottle straight up and down so that the drops are equal sizes. So I've added eight drops of bottle one, and now I'm gonna add eight drops of bottle two. So we've got eight drops of bottle two. I'm gonna put the cap on, and I'm gonna shake it vigorously for five seconds. We've let our ammonia test set for five minutes and you can see that it's a yellow color right up here at the zero heading into 0.25. We need to get some ammonia starting and that lets our bacteria, our good bacteria have something to eat. And that good bacteria is gonna eat the ammonia and turn it into nitrite. So as this tank becomes more established and that bacteria grows, we should start to see ammonia go up then down, then we'll start to see nitrite go up, and then a new bacteria will grow that will eat nitrite and change it into nitrate. And once we're only reading nitrate, we call it cycled. That means there's enough bacteria in the tank to eat the waste from the fish. So we're seeing a little bit of ammonia, which is a good thing. That means those bacteria are starting to grow and they're producing waste and they're starting to eat up the ammonia. So I've dumped and rinsed my tube again and added in five milliliters of tank water. And now I'm going to work on the nitrite test. Remember the nitrite is that first waste that those ammonia eating bacteria produce. So we want to see this start to show up as the tank becomes established. We might not have any when the tank is brand new. So again, I'm gonna put the bottle directly over the tube, straight up and down and squeeze five times.
put the cap on and shake our bottle for five seconds. Now we need to let it set for five minutes until we can read the test. Now we can compare it to the chart. And as we expected this first week in this first testing, we're not gonna see any nitrite because we don't have enough of the ammonia eating bacteria producing nitrite yet, but we should see it next week. Our next test is nitrate. And remember, this is the one that will be the waste product from those bacteria that eat nitrite with an I. Nitrate, the only way to get nitrate out of your tank is by doing water changes. So you'll be seeing videos of me taking some water out of the tank and making sure I vacuum the bottom to get all the debris and waste and then putting some new clean water in. That's how you remove nitrate. And we don't ever want nitrate to go over 40. So anytime it gets close to 40, we're gonna to wanna to do a water change to get it back down up in here. The first thing I did was, again, rinse my tube and put five milliliters of water in the tube. And this one requires two bottles of solution. So I'm gonna first use bottle number one. So with bottle number one, I'm gonna put in 10 drops of the testing solution. I'm gonna put the cap on and shake it for five seconds. Now I can do test bottle number two. This one you need to shake for 30 seconds before you can ever even use the solution. So I've shaken it up. Now I'm going to put 10 drops in here. Now we need to put our cap on and shake this tube very well for a minute. So we've waited five minutes for our nitrate test and you can see we're still up here in the yellow because this first week we don't have enough of the nitrate eating bacteria to produce nitrate yet. But we'll see it in the coming weeks. Now we are going to test GH or our general hardness. And this requires one test solution bottle. And again, that five milliliters of water. And we're gonna do one drop at a time and between each drop, we need to cap it and shake it. And we have to count how many drops we're gonna use. So there's one drop. We're gonna cap it and tip it. See how it's got a bit of a yellow hue? We're waiting for it to change color. So you can see our water in the test tube has turned a pretty good green color. So what this tells us using our GH range, once you get up to these higher numbers, your water will be good for marine fish and brackish water fish and goldfish. My tanks at home, I have brackish water fish. But for salmon, this is actually okay because where do they live in the wild? They are a marine fish. So the fact that I have high GH is actually okay. What we look for is for that GH to be stable. So as we test it throughout the year, we just want it to stay near that same value. Our next test is for KH or carbonate hardness or alkalinity. It has a lot of names. And this one works the same as the GH test kit. Between each drop, I need to shake the tube until it changes color. I hold my tube and hold my bottle straight up and down and add a drop and give it a swirl. And you'll see it's kind of got a blue tint to it. That's what we're looking for. Now we're gonna do another drop and give it a shake. You'll see where the drop hits the water, it's starting to turn yellow. We want the whole vial to turn yellow and that's when we stop counting. We're gonna do drop number 12. Oh, it's thinking about turning yellow. Oh, not quite. Oh, so close.
There we go, we have turned yellow. So now what does that tell us on our test strip? You can see our range again. Again, we're up here. So our KH and GH are at about the same levels and both of them are a little high and better for marine fish and cichlids and brackish water fish. But again, that's okay for our salmon because they are a marine fish in the wild. What we wanna do is make sure they stay near these levels. Now, when we add the fish or we change filter material, those numbers might change a tiny bit, but for the most part, as long as your water source is stable, those numbers will still stay stable. So this is the water test for week one, or week zero, since we don't have fish yet. And we'll be doing these tests every week once we have eggs.